Second question. We always quote Mark 16, 16. But notice what the person says. Please explain the next two verses. Pretty interesting, isn't it? We know what Mark 16, 16 says, don't we? It's a part of the Great Commission. Verse 15, And Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And we stop there, don't we? And there's some more verses. So this person is saying, Okay, we stop right here at verse 16. I want you to go on and I want you to explain the next two verses. Here's what the text says. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now watch this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Wow. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name. Or they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now do you understand? why this person wants us to explain these two verses. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And then he lists five miraculous works that an individual who believes should be able to possess. You see, we just stop at verse 16. Oh, y'all dishonest people. Well, let's talk about it for a minute. Folks in the first century, they didn't have the New Testament written as we do today. The only thing they had is what we might refer to as prophetic revelation of the Word of God coming a little bit here and a little bit there from time to time from A.D. 33 till about A.D. 96. That's the common thought with regard to divine revelation of the New Testament. Well... Anyone could claim a revelation, could they not? I could walk into a church and I could say, I have a revelation from God, and I could give you a message, and then I could leave. And another per anybody off the street could walk in and say, Guess what, folks? I have a revelation from God. What if the two revelations contradicted one another? Uh-oh, we got a problem, don't we? You see, the brethren be asking the question, who am I to believe? Am I to believe Vic? Or am I to believe that guy that just came in here and contradicted what Vic had to say? Well, God had a way to confirm the Word, folks. And it was through miraculous gifts that the Word of God was confirmed. I want you to go to Mark 16, and I want you to look at verse 20 for just a minute. The Bible says this, And they, talking about the apostles, went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, note this, confirming the Word with signs following. You see, now an individual can issue forth a prophetic revelation, but how does he confirm the Word? How does he show that what he is saying is absolutely authoritative, folks? By miraculous gifts. That's the way it was done. We turn to Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. The Bible tells us, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first was spoken unto us by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him? Now watch this. The Lord also bearing them witness with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His will. Notice what the text says. The word of the Lord was confirmed unto them that heard Him. Folks, that's the apostles and other prophets of the first century. And then he says this, The Lord bore them witness. How? Through signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. You see, the way they confirmed the word was through miraculous gifts. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Abilities to confirm the spoken word of God. How was that ability given? That's the question, isn't it? And folks, it was given by the laying on of apostolic hands, according to Acts chapter 
8, 14 through 17. Listen to what the Bible says. Now remember, Philip had gone to Samaria, had preached the Word of God to those individuals. They heard and they obeyed the Word of God. Now listen to what the text says. And when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that the Samaritans had received the Word of the Lord, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Folks, receiving the Holy Ghost was receiving the miraculous works of the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. You see, individuals were heard the Word of God, they were baptized into Christ, the apostles would then lay hands on them, and they would receive the miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit in order to confirm the written Word and also in order to help them do the work of the first century church because they did not have the written Word. Now that's all the passage is teaching in Romans 16, verses 16 through 18. Now, there's one other view that I find interesting and it may be a truthful view as well to John 16, verses 17 and 18. When you go back and you look at the context of Acts the 16th chapter, Jesus is appearing to the eleven. Judas has already gone out and hung himself. And there's just eleven. And the Bible says this, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Now watch what he does. And he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. You see, here were the apostles sitting in a room and they didn't believe the testimony of individuals who had seen Jesus rise from the dead. They were in their unbelief. Now think about that. Unbelieving apostles that needed to be commissioned to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's what he wanted them to do, isn't it? So what he's telling them is this, guys, you've got to get rid of your unbelief. And if you do, when you go out to preach the gospel to the world, then these signs are going to follow you because you believe. Does that make sense? They were unbelievers, but they needed to believe if they're going to preach the gospel. And if you believe, then these signs are going to follow you. And then we have verse 20, don't we? And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Folks, the believers in verse 17 could refer to the apostles who desperately needed to believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. And if they truly believed, God would grant them those signs that would confirm the spoken word as they went through the world preaching the truth of the gospel of Christ. So there's two different views as to exactly what verses 17 and 18 mean. One of them refer to any believer who is baptized into Christ, who receives the miraculous gifts of the Spirit. The other is that it refers to the apostles who needed to believe and have these gifts as they went out to preach the gospel of Christ to the world. So you can study the text more for yourself.